Welcome to Saline Magic Carpet. In this episode, we show you a day in the life of Mediterranean cruising on board our 28-foot Vinda. Right now, we are exploring Menorca, an island which is part of the Balearics of Spain. It's Ibiza's quiet and beautiful cousin. Although they are in the same group of islands, Menorca's laid-back style of life and quiet anchorages differentiates it from the throbbing nightclubs of Ibiza. Here it is Sailor's Paradise. Let us show you. So it's just before 8 a.m. in the morning and we are heading out of Mahan. We left the dock early in Mahon, the capital of Menorca. The harbor there is gorgeous, lined with houses clinging to steep cliffs and palm trees providing shade. At the time that we were there, there was also a classic boat regatta happening, so there were some pretty spectacular boats at the quay. We motored out of the huge natural harbor, and then, once we were on the sea, we opened the Genoa and began to sail. That moment when you turn off the engine and the world goes quiet, your boat moved forward by silent sails, that's a beautiful moment. The hills they seem all green, but they hide all the monsters. And you kept holding my hand as you reached for water. The hills by the lake, you were chasing your dreams. And I gave you a rose that you kept on sea. Kept on So once you get out on the sea, things often start moving a bit. So we always make sure the boat is neat and tidy before we put the sails up. You can see our stove over here is actually on a gimbal. So as the waves roll, the stove rolls with it. And this is fantastic because it means that things don't fall off the stove as easily. That's pretty much a must for a sailboat. If you're going to do any sailing, uh, live aboard sailing, you need a gimbaled stove. One set in position isn't going to work. You'll never be able to cook. Yeah, so a lot of things in the boat are set up to, to handle moving around all the time. All of the shelves have little bars across them so things don't fly out. Um, this hammock is really nice because it also kind of moves with the waves a bit. So we put all our fruits and veggies in there. This is our chart table. So in here we just have documents and papers and stuff like that. Over here, our tiny little galley. So my sink. Um, here's our fridge, which is actually really exciting. We just got it working. Aladino just fixed it. It had been broken all summer. Um, but now we finally have a fridge, which is going to change things a lot for us. And we also have these pot holders, which you can slide along the rail here to keep your pots in place. This is kind of messy at the moment because when we get going sailing, we kind of throw everything in here because it's just a nice compartment. But this is a bunch of food and just condiments that we use regularly. Um, our table folds up so we can make it into a full table if we want to. Fruits and veggies. And in all of these compartments is just more storage. So here's kind of all our plates and stuff. Um, now this is a cool feature. This lifts up and, oh, the sheet's not tucked in, but it turns into a bed. So when we have guests come and stay, then they can sleep here. And underneath all of these benches, called berths on a boat, but underneath all of them are more storage compartments. So we keep all of our canned food, packaged food, etc., in there. We also actually keep some canned food in the bilge. Well, there's just a little bit of it. Over here we have some more cans. It's actually a really good idea, as much as possible, to concentrate weight in the bottom of your boat 
rather than on the sides. So if you can put heavier things like cans, if you can put them lower down in the bilge, that's going to increase your sailing performance and even make for a safer vessel. So we do that as much as possible. Um, even underneath the benches, the weight storage is still pretty low in the boat. And up here, apart from the books, I mean, books are kind of the only heavier thing that we keep up higher. So moving forward, we have our bed up here. This is where Aladino and I sleep. It's quite cozy actually, it fits the both of us really nicely, there's lots of room. And then if we turn around, this is kind of a tight maneuvering, but in here is the bathroom. Super teeny tiny, there's the toilet, and then the sink actually slides away when you don't need it. So it is a very small space, but it's a very functional space as well. I mean, I was able to take all of my belong belongings on board. I didn't really have to leave much behind. Um, things just kind of hide away in all of the storage compartments which are hidden throughout the entire boat. And at the end, you're left with, yeah, something that doesn't look like there's that much stuff hidden away, but in fact, there's tons behind all of these settees. Behind here, there's more storage, so. It's very well designed, and a lot of boats are. I mean, boats are generally are generally very intelligently designed to maximize use of space. I think it's really cool seeing how well space can be used if you really plan out every square inch of it, which is what they've done. And what Aladino did as well when he, uh, when he rebuilt the boat, he did a few changes to maximize even more space. The cliffs had many caves carved into them, so we took the boat closer to have a look. When the stars glow bright, the summer's old. In the misty bright moonlight, I would told. When the storm is raging in your head. When you feel there's nothing more. I just made some lunch, some chicken sandwiches. Yeah, it looks awesome. Mm, look at this. Just after we ate lunch, we noticed a bay which looked quite promising. We decided to alter course and go check it out. Stunned. We are arriving in paradise, and as soon as the boat slows down and stops moving, I'm going to drop the anchor. This is an incredible spot. Check this. It turns out that the bay was perfect for anchoring. We let down our anchor in crystal clear turquoise water. As soon as the boat was secure, we jumped in the water and went snorkeling. As the sun began to turn gold, we hopped in the dinghy to go explore the land. We found a trail winding through the steep cliffs and valleys which we followed for a little while.
After a short walk, we decided to turn around and explore some of the cliffs surrounding the beach. The sun slowly set, and we returned to our floating home. We just got back to the boat after a little excursion on land, and it always feels like home, returning to the boat. I mean, it is our home. Everything that I own is on board this boat, so. And it's a beautiful home. The sun is just setting. We're all alone in this anchorage, which is such a treat. I love it when that happens. Although the cruising community are some of the best people I've ever met. We spent the last week in an anchorage with a bunch of other cruisers from all over the world, and we made lifelong friends. I mean, it was amazing. But every now and then, the point of a sailboat is to, is to move and to find different sceneries and different communities as you go. So sometimes it's nice to have that isolated bit of paradise, and that's what we found right here. It's pretty special. We had a cold rattler to celebrate our newly working fridge. Aladino tried some fishing, and I went inside to begin editing this video. So the day is fading away now, the sun is setting. Aladino's gonna go out in the dinghy and see if he can catch a fish, and I am going to get ready to create this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that it fueled your inspiration and your dreams. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the practical side of sailing and what it actually looks like on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis, please subscribe to our channel because I make videos about every 10 days and we'll show you our travels, we'll show you how we do crossings overnight and we'll also even show you in the first few episodes how we rebuilt this boat. It was actually a total shipwreck when we got it. So there's lots more to learn about boating and a lot more inspiration to be had. I hope you enjoyed this brief little video and yeah, we hope to see more of you. Leave us a comment. I read every single one of the comments we get on the channel and I really like reading those. Alright, bye. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the terrible lighting on this shot, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank some of our Patreons. Thank you, all of you, for the support which you give us. It's really incredible to us. It's quite astounding, actually. But uh, we especially wanted to give a shout out to Scott Grometer, Pat Mornin, Lloyd Falbaum, James F. Gardner, and our newest Patreon, John Dodd. So thank you so much, you guys, for the really extra generous support that you provide to us. Um, we appreciate you so much.